Hi there. You've tuned into episode seven of Cycling News and Views. I'm Colton Reed. It's great to have you here, and thanks for all the feedback I've been getting. Today's podcast is all about the US bicycle industry's links with cycle advocacy. You know, those people who want more people on bikes more often, and they do the grassroots work. At the Velo Mondial bike conference held in South Africa, I caught up with Elizabeth Train of Bikes Belong, which is funded by the industry, and Andy Clark of the League of American Bicyclists, and that's kind of like the CTC of the US. With industry cash, the American cycle advocacy movement has recently made some impressive gains. I am Elizabeth Train. I'm the Grants and Research Director at the Bikes Belong Coalition in the United States. Okay, and where has Bikes Belong come from? Bikes Belong was started by some really key members in the U.S. bicycle industry in 1998, and they formed with a mission of putting more people on bicycles more often. They realized that the more people riding bikes, the more people would come and buy bikes from shops, um, which would benefit the industry as a whole. And how does the industry pay for it? The industry pays through membership dues, and the bike distributors pay um, 750 per 1 million, um, and the retailers pay on a scale. So less than 300,000 US dollars gross, the annual dues would be $100, and then it goes up from there. And are there any unbelievers who don't pay? There are, unfortunately. We don't have complete compliance in the United States at this point, but we're really hoping to kind of change the tide. Um, we've had some great success over the past year, and we're hoping to continue to get more people on board. The people who do pay in <laughs> must be upset that the people who don't pay in are riding on coattails. So. There's definitely a little bit of that, and I think we're very fortunate in that our members realize that what they're doing is so important that they're not willing to step back just because there's some folks who won't climb on board. So but, we're lucky. <laughs> okay. For every dollar that uh, the trade puts in, how much mm -hmm. is coming back in federal funds? Well, basically, that's hard to determine as a huge sum. We can determine it per program. Since I'm in charge of the grants program, I know that for the million dollars that we've invested in grassroots grants, we've leveraged $450 million. So it's a great, great sum. And tell me more about Bikes Pack, the Political Action Committee. Bikes Pack has been successful. We actually just had a fundraiser uh, last week at the National Bike Summit in Washington, D.C., and it's a political action committee that we formed uh, when Bikes Belong started, um, and it enables industry members, so people who work for the, the big bike industry companies like Trek and Specialized and Giant and Shimano, as well as people who are working in retail shops to donate to their industry, which to their industry pack, and then we turn around and give donations to members of Congress who we know will help us uh, when they step up and vote. And President Bush, there's a, a good link there now because of the meeting last week? There is. We had a very successful meeting with President Bush, who, as many people know, is an avid mountain biker. He's actually building trails on his ranch, and he's very enthusiastic about bicycling. Um, he realizes the health benefits, which is wonderful. He's really in tune with the fact that bicycling is important for children, um, and he's just very supportive of everything we're doing, so we're really excited. <laughs> Is it not the problem that maybe if President Bush is doing it, people don't want to do it? You know, I don't think so. I think that because he's really expressing his enthusiasm for it as a sport, there's really no politics involved. We, we say, actually, bicycling is bike partisan, which means it has absolutely no affiliation with a political party. Um, it just has an affiliation with health and fun and flexibility and joy. So. Do you think President Bush might be wary of cycling, that he gets, he gets painted in a corner as this strange person who rides a bike? I don't think so. Um, I think he's, again, he's enthusiastic about it, and it doesn't seem to me that we've had any sort of a, a negative repercussions because he's a cyclist, so we're pretty pleased. Would you say he's mainstreaming cycling in America? I think he is. He's not a lycra man. He's, he's fairly low-key in that he rides a mountain bike um, just so he can sit more upright, but he rides on dirt roads. He doesn't ride on aggressive trails. He actually said, you know, I'm not much of a rocks and jumps kind of guy. And so he's, he's you know, not a, a totally aggressive cyclist. He's cycling because he, it makes him feel good. It gives him great time to think, and um, it's just a really beneficial activity. So we're pleased. Do you think he should ride with both hands on his handlebars from now on? That's probably a good idea, yes. <laughs> Everyone should ride with both handlebars, not just our president. 
Elizabeth, where can people get more information about Bikes Belong from? Uh, visiting bikesbelong.org is the best way to do that, or they're certainly welcome to call our office or stop by in Boulder, Colorado. We'd love to see you and take you on a ride. It's a great bicycling city, Boulder. It's wonderful. We're very lucky to be there. Andy Clark, I'm the Executive Director of the League of American Bicyclists. At the end of February, uh, February 28th, the um, Bikes Belong Coalition Board of Directors, which is the Bicycle Industries um, Advocacy and Education Coalition, um, organized a meeting with or were invited to uh, attend a meeting with President Bush in, in the White House. And uh, it was truly a unique opportunity for the, for the bicycle movement, represented by the industry in this case, to uh, to talk with the leader of the free world about his love of cycling and, and uh, what, if anything, he can do to help um, join up the dots, if you like, with the policy issues for which bicycling is such a good solution. Tell me about the billions that America's now got for increasing cycling use. Well, one of the agenda items uh, with the, for the bike industry people and for our National Bike Summit, which was at the beginning of March, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., was to say thank you to the U.S. Congress and to the President for passing a transportation bill in the U.S. Uh, that will direct over the next five years close to $5 billion worth of investment into bicycling and walking facilities and improvements and education programs. So it's a tremendous opportunity and a big success for the bicycle movement to see that level of investment um, going into cycling. And we hope that it will produce results in communities across America and actually get people riding and walking more often. And what about the, the laugh factor you're talking about in there about how if the president aligns himself too much with cycling, there's already yeah. people who do take the, the mickey out of him for riding a bike. How, I, how can I think it's true from the president on down uh, in the U.S. and, and uh, in any country in the world, any locality in the world. Politicians always have to weigh uh, good decisions for the long term and the... the, the, the um, uh, to, to achieve their various policy goals with how they're going to be portrayed. And there's still a credibility gap that exists in promoting bicycling. And no politician wants to be uh, uh, become a joke because of a policy position that they take. And so it's, um, it's hugely refreshing, for example, to see uh, the new Conservative Party leader in the, in the UK being happy to be photographed on his bike and to make that actually part of the reinvention of the of the Conservative Party. That's a uh, a great um, a great thing for cycling to be construed in, in that way. Similarly, I hope that the president and members of Congress in, in the U.S. will feel comfortable promoting bicycling without worrying about any negative connotations, without that appearing to be quirky or odd or um, uh, in any way odd, because. You know, in the State of the Union address, the president said we have to end our addiction to foreign oil. And there's no better way to do that than to get people riding. We have a massive, literally, obesity crisis in the U.S. Uh, we have uh, extraordinary uh, levels of physical inactivity that we have to overcome that affects everything from the price of goods on the uh, shelves in the U.S. to uh, health care costs. Uh, generally, that has to be resolved with physical activity at the core, and that's where cycling plays a role. You name the policy issue, whether it's recreation, um, whether it's uh, global climate change, uh, cycling's a part of the answer. And we have to get to the point where people who promote cycling can do so without fear of being laughed at. Tell me more about Bikes Belong, uh -huh. and how that has that actually, did that bring those that five billion dollars or was that a catalyst that was already going to come yeah. Did the industry seed funded this organization tell me a yeah. bit more about how other countries maybe sure maybe here could actually benefit from that experience uh, yeah and one of the great things that's happened in the u.s in the last five years has been the emergence of the bike industry as uh, not just a political interest in, in and of itself but uh, in supporting advocacy and education programs and bikes belong has um given grants to local advocacy or campaign groups to promote particular cycling projects 